Hey everyone, welcome to the channel! This video is a quick look at some of the new patches that have been released for The Last of Us on the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3. This is sort of a follow-up to my previous video covering this game, so I'm not going to go super in-depth like I did in that video, but I do want to take a closer look at some of the things that are fixed by these new patches, as well as overall performance when compared to just using the MLAA and SPU lighting patches shown in my previous video. If you want a more in-depth look at the current state of this game, I recommend checking out BSOD Gaming's video or even my previous video while keeping the improvements shown here in mind. To catch you up to speed, not long after my previous video was released, RPCS3 contributors Zero X and Illusion created patches using the Cheat Engine program to bypass a few effects, which fixed quite a few graphical bugs while also improving performance. Thanks to the hard work of several of the project's contributors, Zero X and Illusion's Cheat Engine patches have now been converted into a patch that can be used in RPCS3 without having to use another program like Cheat Engine alongside of it. These patches have been combined with WhatCookie's MLAA patch, as well as my Trap Error patch into a single compendium, so everything that you need has been condensed into one single patch. You can find a link to this in the description. All you need to do is drop the patch.yml file into your RPCS3 directory, or open it with a text editor and copy the contents into your existing patch.yml if you already have one. We'll cover some patch-related issues in a minute, but if you need to disable a patch, just scroll down to the bottom of the file and type a pound sign or hash symbol in front of the line that applies to that patch, and then save the file and restart the emulator. It's worth mentioning that you'll want to disable my trap error patch after the hotel elevator scene. You may need to enable it again to get through the underground tunnel, but that set of trap errors seems to be fixed on recent versions of RPCS3. Once your patch file is in place, you'll also need to configure RPCS3 appropriately for this game. So open up the emulator and right-click your game and set up a custom configuration. On the CPU tab, just make sure that both decoders are set to LLVM and make note of whether your CPU supports TSX, as this will come into play later on. On the GPU tab, use the Vulkan backend and set the resolution to something reasonable for your PC. I'm running the game in 1440p for this video. You also may or may not want to toggle right color buffers on. We'll take a closer look at this in just a bit, but in general, I leave it off as it does impact performance. Also, it's a good idea to set the frame limit to 60, as you'll almost never hit it, and the extremely high frame rates and loading screens can cause some instability, particularly when going from the game, to the main menu, and back into the game. Over on the Advanced tab, just enable Read Color Buffers, and set the driver wake-up delay somewhere between 200 and 400 or so. Also, be sure to set V-Blank to 120 to raise the frame limit from 30 to 60. And finally, if you have a CPU that doesn't support TSX, such as Ryzen or certain Intel chips, you'll want to enable Force Accurate RSX reservations in the Debug tab. If you need to enable this tab, just head to your RPCS3 directory and into the GUI configs folder, and then open currentsettings.ini with a text editor. Hit Ctrl F and search for Debug, then change Show Debug tab to True and save the file. Now that we've got the settings covered, let's take a look at what this patch will do for you compared to just using the MLAA and SPU lighting patches like in my previous video. Just taking a look at this scene from the Capitol building, the overwhelming bloom effect has been taken care of, as well as the depth of field blur, making the image crystal clear while also improving performance substantially. Disabling right color buffers also provides a decent boost to performance, and it's no longer necessary for things like bodies of water to render correctly. However, enabling it will fix the green rain and particle effects that are encountered in a few areas of the game. Another major benefit to using these patches is that the cargo level is now rendering properly with MLAA disabled. Previously, you would need to disable WhatCookie's MLAA patch to avoid a black screen in this level, but now it's looking great and running smoother than ever. Plenty of smaller graphical bugs have been addressed by this patch as well. For example, the aiming reticle for thrown items and the bow is no longer a glowing mess, and flames from weapons such as Molotovs and the flamethrower are now rendering correctly. Broken textures while upscaling have also been fixed, and thanks to the depth effects being disabled, you no longer have to worry about a silhouette getting stuck on screen during gameplay. With all of these improvements in mind, you can still expect to see some minor issues while using these patches. 
For example, you may experience some flickering every now and then, and Joel's listening ability is also still broken by these patches, but it's not required at any point in the game. In terms of general performance, as you've probably noticed in the footage, this patch has me sitting around 20 to 30 frames per second fairly consistently in 1440p with an 8700K running at 4.9 GHz. Although there are many places where things push into the 30s and 40s, and even a couple of spots where I get into the 50s briefly. On the flip side, some areas of the game are still very demanding even with these effects bypassed, so things do drop down to the high teens from time to time, and even down to around 10 frames per second in a couple of brief spots like you see here in the prologue. Stability aside from the trap errors has not really been affected by these new patches, so you can still expect a few random crashes, as well as unmapped memory errors every few minutes in some chapters such as the Financial District, Escape the City, and Go Bighorns. You can disable the MLAA patch to prevent these crashes, but I personally prefer dealing with them compared to how this game runs without a patch in those sections. There's also an unpreventable crash after the bus scene in the underground tunnel, but you'll hit an autosave point so just restart the emulator and you'll be able to pick right back up from where you left off. So that should cover just about everything that you need to know about the new patches that have been released for The Last of Us. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll keep them coming. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.